Hey, what's up? This is Mark the Clive Loaf, and you're checking out Toasted.com. Could you first of all introduce yourself, please? I'm Mark the Clive Loaf. I'm a musician, producer, DJ, world traveler, man about. <laughs> and here in Amsterdam right now, you're on stage in about 10 minutes, so we gotta make it a quickie, like I uh, like I said to you uh, two minutes ago. You're here with an orchestra, right? Mm -hmm. I'm here with a jazz big band. Um, it's the first time I've done a show with a big band. Well, actually, I lie. When I was about 13, one of my first gigs was was with a big band in New Zealand, but that was just playing piano. So tonight's with like drum machines and synths and effects and stuff. So it's like a coming whole circle. 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you wind up here? Did somebody call you like you want to join us? We have a band or? Sure. Um, Rob Vandenwell, the trumpet player, he saw me play at the um, the New Moon Festival in Rotterdam. And he just approached me and said, I'd love you to play with this big band. Um, the gig's in a year and a half. <laughs> are, you, yeah. are you available? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you come over and, and, and just, you just know what to play or how does it work? Well, I'm, I sent some of, some of my music um, that I've already released and recorded and then some sketches I was writing and sent them to the arranger here and he did big band arrangements basically to my music. Um, I arrived today, we had a couple of hours rehearsal, one hour sound check. But you know, everyone's fairly talented and able. So well, It's crazy, right? I mean, you don't <laughs> do that too often, I guess. Well, I, I do that often with different things, but not with a big band. So it's a lot of fun to do, be doing this. Where, you know, like I love all the I love all the, the Ellington music, and you know, my dad raised me on 1930s big band, but I love my hip hop and club music and everything. And so to bring it all together tonight. Did you ever uh, make a record with a big band? You think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I never thought about it until this gig, and then when I heard some of the arrangements, I was th I was thinking, yeah, I could make a record with a big band. <laughs> hey, I was digging into your uh, into your uh, your bio and. Mm. I was thinking, first of all, you were introduced to me as being a DJ. Well, you're not. And then as you, a producer, <laughs> you are. I do that But well. you do a lot more stuff. Yeah. Who are you? What do you do? Well, I'm, I'm a musician primarily. I, mean, I like to think of myself as a creative. I, I grew up playing piano. I played piano since I was four. Went through classical, jazz, and soul, and funk, and Afro-Cuban music, all sorts of stuff. I fell in love with jungle. I, I came to the UK. I went to the UK in 1998 and didn't expect to find what I found, which was um, the West London crew, Bugs in the Attic, For Hero, Rest of Soul, IG Culture. And I just really became entrenched with that community as a creative for a good 10 years. And it kind of, that kind of taught me how to bring being a musician and production and club music and everything all together, but in a way that's you know, progressive and not, it's not contrived as to you know, everything you're told you're supposed to, you're supposed to do. jungle scene was uh, about to blow up if you would to believe all the music magazines uh -huh. and the record companies whatever happened to it actually they're still going man goldie's yeah, I mean. goldie's still doing his thing and but it's funny it's like that, that that scene jungle was about evolution and drum and bass was about kind of two-steppy club music and it lost the kind of evolution and the organicness and the experimentation but for me that kind of spirit just it transferred to other forms of music and it kept going. I mean, the UK is great like that. It's one of the few places in the world where they come up with contemporary fusions of music that are entirely original. You were originally from New Zealand, right? Yeah. What made you stay in London? The music. Yeah. I, got, I couldn't I, do that in New Zealand. Well, those, those, that community wasn't there. It's that thing with tennis. It's like you know, you, you got to play with a better player than you. It was that kind of vibe. I've got to be somewhere where I'm challenged and inspired by the environment, and you know, to grow myself through that. And then you end up playing with Pino Palladino. I mean, uh, I love Pino. <laughs> I love Pino. I mean, he's he's one of my favorite bass players on the planet, and That's probably one of the best too, right? I mean. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's nice for me where. You know, you do your own thing and your own creative expression, and there's no greater validation than a great musician being like, yeah, man, I dig what you do, and let's do some music. Is it that easy? I mean, Pino Palladino doesn't play with everyone, right? 
plays with me. <laughs> well, how, did they, how did they wind up? Well, I mean, he, we, we met through a, a mutual friend, put a jam band together. And we, we were in a studio together for a month and a half, did 60 tunes with this band, which is... Well, she'll remain nameless because it's never coming out. Did but you, <laughs> someone else's. Did you record it? Or? Yeah, 60 tunes recorded. It's someone else's project, so I, I don't have. It. Wow, it will never come out. It's it's like a it's like a UK Soul Quarians Soul to Soul for 2004 or whatever, whatever year it was. It was incredible. It's never coming out. But I met I met Pino through that, so that was a great experience to meet him through that. And then, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of American artists I really dig and am inspired by, and. It's through people like Pino and Sammy Figueroa, percussionist for Miles in the 80s. I play a lot with him. And through people like that, they're telling their boys about it, and word spreads. And I get to work with some people. I get to tick, tick off my wish list, basically. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, your wish list is probably, you've got a lot of ticks because you play with Lauren Hill and uh-huh. you play with uh, Omar here. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other people in there that you want to play with, you didn't play with yet. Well, there's. There's one getting ticked off quite soon, but I won't say that till it actually oh, happens. Come on, no, we we got four minutes. No, th- but the ones that the ones that are not ticked off that need to get ticked off, there's only three, because Jay Dill has died. So, um, but it's D'Angelo, Q-Tip, and Herbie. <laughs> Q-Tip for a while, right? I mean, yeah, I've always loved Q-Tip. He's always been my favorite MC, and I mean, he does a night in New York with a really good friend of mine, Rich Medina. And it's funny because people like Tip and and D'Angelo, and actually all, all three of them, Herbie as well. We've got a lot of people in common in this weird way. So I just I just wait, you know, do my thing, and sooner or later, paths will cross. So sooner probably than later, you'll end up with Q-Tip, and we hope can so. hope to listen to that too. So I'm, I've, I've relocated to Los Angeles now from London. Okay. So I feel much more in the thick of that thing. It's not jazzy, Los Angeles. It's it's not about jazz. Ah. It's just about music and evolving and growing. But this has to do with your new project then? It has to do with a lot of new projects. It has to do with the whole... For me, it's like the next chapter. London kind of came to an end. It was, it was 10 years in the UK, creatively very satisfying, but on a human level, it's not a very satisfying city or place. You know, I grew up by the beach. And now I'm back by the beach. So you, you put your surf shorts on and yeah, man. Mid November, I'm on my you know on my bicycle and a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're in Holland, freezing your ass off. It's all good, man. It's a pleasure to be here. When is your new up? Uh, secret project coming out and why can't you elaborate a little on it well I, I mean there's a lot of stuff coming out I'm finishing an album for a, a rapper from Cleveland named Rep Life and um, some stuff with a few vocalists in the states kind of projects kind of in motion and, and development and yeah when they happen they'll, people know that they're happening Hey, this lineup you're playing tonight, uh-huh. you have another gig tomorrow in Rotterdam, yep. and that's just for Holland, right? You don't play with a big band anywhere else. Never, if people want to see you, it's never happened. It's never happened, and next time it will happen, we'll probably be with the same crew. I mean, I don't, I don't have another big band in my back pocket. You know, <laughs> it's not the kind of thing you carry around. So it's, it's a real pleasure. So if you don't live in Holland, you, it's just bad luck. Yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully it'll be a record one day as well. So you never know. You don't want to elaborate on that one, right? Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> have, a good, have a good show tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs>